bus mob it is two o'clock eastern standard time and as always on wednesdays i try to make myself as available as possible live so i i got a bunch of questions from you ladies on bus mob's instagram that i'm going to answer but before those i also wanted to give you guys some bus mob announcements so the first one is Today, Dr. Hunter, who's our Amelia Aesthetics Raleigh surgeon, will be going live inside of the Bus Mob Facebook group at, I think, 5 o'clock? Yeah, 5 o'clock Eastern. Give him a little grace period because, you know, surgeons are, like, tying up consultations or coming up from surgery. So give him a five-minute plus or minus window for our surgeons when they pop on. So Dr. Hunter will be on today inside the main group at 5 o'clock Eastern. So just ask him any questions you want about plastic surgery. And he is honored to be able to be a part of Bus Mob and answer this for you ladies. Second, tomorrow, I am going to be interviewing Dr. Fredman, our Amelia St. Louis surgeon, on Bus Mob's Instagram. So if you didn't know, Bus Mob has an Instagram. I'm going to put it in the comments. And it's just Bus Mob. That's not right. Yep. So you guys can tune in there tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern. I'll be interviewing Dr. Fredman. And if you're like, how the heck am I supposed to keep up with all these dates? Well, on bustmob.com, um, we have an events page, so you can kind of keep track of what lives are going on, when and where. So if you can't catch one this week, maybe you can catch one next week. So check that out. Dr. Routon and Dr. Hunter and even Dr. Fredman have been going live pretty regularly in the Facebook group. So if you want to check out the events page, you can see when they're going to go live and you can pop on, ask them questions and all that good stuff. So that concludes the announcement portion. I'm going to launch into the questions you guys submitted on Bus Mob's Instagram and also inside the Facebook group because I created an event in the event section and Facebook just did an update that kind of makes it hard to find the events. So um, when you're in the group, if you don't, let's pretend we're all on our phones. Hey, look, get the boobs. Oh, look, I'm going live right now. That's weird. Um, <laughs> but if you go into the group, I'll show you how you can find it. So there's like a, a new little tab at the top, a little hamburger, that's what it's called. Well, the four members were hiding it. Um, if you click on that, it shows you ah, rooms, guides, events, and albums. So if you're wondering like how to find photos quick or how to find the events that are happening for Bus Mob inside the community, you can click that little spot at the upper left-hand corner, the three lines. And that'll give you the option to like click on events and you can see all the events that are happening. So that's a pretty recent update in the past month. And it kind of made it hard to find the events. So if you're wondering like me, that's where it's at. Okie dokie. So here are the questions you guys asked on Instagram and in Facebook. And the first one was to talk about the booby blues and post-op depression. So right off the bat, not a fun topic, right? But it's something we should all prepare our spirits for. Um, whether you're more prone to having depression or not, um, it's an emotional roller coaster for some women after having surgery. So why is that? Well, first, a lot of times we're going to wake up not seeing our immediate results, right? So we have to wait an extended period of time after creating trauma to our body that we have to heal from. So instantly, we're going to be internalizing a lot of things. And so the first usually six weeks, are, can be a roller coaster. And somebody even posted yesterday inside the main group, they were like, if you are wondering whether you should have a su supportive spouse or not, here's why I think you should. And that was a great post. If you haven't read it, go check it out. But she was basically talking about how Im instrumental and important it was for her to have a supportive spouse during her recovery, because it is emotional. Like we don't see our results immediately. We're in pain. We're recovering. And then even then we have to have patience, like the whole trust the process, you know, and like we're taking medications, we're taking sometimes opiates, which can, can cause depression or trigger it for a lot of people. Um, it depresses your nervous system, anesthesia. There's just so much happening all at one time to your body and it can affect our minds. So a way to kind of prepare yourself ahead of time before having surgery, just to kind of, you know, remember, hey, this is going to be an emotional roller coaster. Take a lot of before photos before your surgery, because that way I see a lot of people in bus mob. They're like, man, if I hadn't taken that before photo, I wouldn't realize how excited I am now comparing them to my befores. So 
taking a lot of before photos first will really help you just remember the why behind why you had the procedure to begin with. Another thing I tell women to do is, right, this is going to sound cheesy, but I swear if, if you need it, it's there. Write yourself a letter before you have surgery, like thanking yourself, reminding yourself why you're having surgery. And then also it's nice to just kind of like write everything down like, hey, you might be feeling this way afterwards, but that's okay. Like just kind of encouraging yourself before surgery. So when you have those moment, moments after surgery, you can pull that letter, read it and be like, okay, I remember now why I decided to do this and things will get better. And also if you have the booby blues and you're feeling all those things, make sure you jump into bus mob because I guarantee you, you're not the only one feeling that way, especially after that woman's post yesterday, which was really, really cool. So if you're experiencing that, don't feel like you're isolated. Don't feel like you're alone. Get in the group, do a post, and then you're just going to be really surprised at how many other people can relate to where you're at right now. Okay. Second question, getting breast implants before kids. I want bigger breasts, but my friends are being critical. I don't like this for a lot of reasons, and I'll tell you why. So first, I like how inside a bus mob, um, it's like it's such a safe place for us to take screenshots of criticism or other groups and posting it in here and just really loving on each other because basically it boils down to why do you want this procedure and what does it mean to you? Like, who cares what other people say? Now I get it. Like, it's hard. It's really hard when like your significant other isn't on, on board or your best friend isn't or your sister. Like, it sucks. It really does. But this is something for you and for no one else. This is for your comfort. This is for your confidence. This is for your identity. Like, if, if you can at any point, you don't have to tell them nothing, you know? And when it comes down to whether or not to have implants before or after kids, I always want to ask people this question. Well, do you want to have kids in the next one to two years? If the answer is, well, no, or I don't know, then I'm like, well, then go ahead and get them now. Because if you, if you have no timeline or it could be in 10 years and maybe be never, I would say go ahead and get them now because you can enjoy them before kids and after kids. Now, if you want to have surgery in the next year or two, then I would be like, well, let's hold off on that because you might need an additional surgery after you are done breastfeeding. And with it being so close, maybe this isn't the right time. So really just a conversation with yourself. Like, do I want implants now or after kids? For me, it was before. I knew I wanted to have my daughter, but it was like, I don't know when. There's no, we had like no trajectory, no like, well, in five years and in 10 years, it was just like a, uh. so I'm like, well, I'm going to get them now because I know what I want now. And then I think five, it was five years later after my first breast dog, then I had Hazel and then I had another breast dog. So Stephanie, I don't want to breeze past this. I want to start dropping questions because I'm a hot mess. You do you, Stephanie, drop all your questions. I am here for you too. And while you're going to drop your questions, and I don't think you're a hot mess. You shouldn't call yourself that. If you think you are, then I guess we were all hot messes here. Um, let me ask. I'm going to answer another question. What? Oh, Sarah. My VA is on 11.3. And I'm, oh, y'all. Are y'all nervous before surgery? It sounds like Sarah is about to have surgery. Stephanie, I wonder what you're worried about. So now I'm like, come on, tell me, tell me. Okay, well, while you're typing that up, I'm going to answer the next question. So another question was... Um, this is a good question. Um, can you talk about the weird shapes of breasts following a lift? So we're all pretty well versed in this group. Like we see the after photos pretty quickly of a lift. And a lot of us do know that's not the final look. Kind of like when you have a breast augmentation, it's not your final look. It's going to take a good nine months to see that, right? With the breast lift, it people don't really, I don't know if it's a lack of, like, I'm not communicating it enough, and that might be very true. Um, but with a lift, I've had two. I had one with a breast reduction and one lift after I breastfed my daughter, who's not over there. So I don't know why I'm pointing over there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so they're bringing your skin, like, they're cutting out, like, a triangle almost, and then bringing that skin together. So when you wake up, it might look a little pointy at the bottom or a little flat, almost like your breast is upside down. 
and it throws everybody off and it's not something that you're really expecting to see but there can be it can be pointy afterwards like this or it can be like a flat spot on the bottom but all of that will end up rounding out once that tissue stretches and takes its final shape so i don't want anyone to get overwhelmed after a lift and they see that that is not what they're going to look like long term <laughs> it does take time just like with a breast dog or a tummy tuck or a reduction just any of those things um it's it takes a good six to nine months and if it's a tummy tuck sometimes 12 months for that swelling to go down so it's a process it's a journey so if you if you had a lift and they look pointy or flat that's that's normal that will end up rounding out over time so just give yourself some grace take those pictures because i swear progress photos are so helpful um hi gina all right back to the comment section stephanie okay Ooh, this is a long one y'all give me 30 seconds to read it all right if i have current under the muscle is it better to stay under the muscle and use the current pocket versus swapping to over muscle? Um, concern with staying under the muscles workouts. There are mixed feelings on them. Can I do burpees, do ball roll? Um, well, if you currently have under the muscle implants, can you do burpees? Can you play volleyball? Um, you can do really any of those things with under the muscle or over the muscle placement. Now, if you swap your placement from under to overs, you're gonna have a visual difference in what your breast anatomy look like. So are you, it just depends on what your goal is. If it's for strictly working out purposes and you think swapping them will, it will change how much you can use your chest muscles. Like a lot of times if you're like really into CrossFit or power lifting or something really extreme sports, most women will go over the muscles so you don't have that distortion of the implant or so you don't overwork your chest muscles and push them out laterally to the sides. So nobody wants that. Um, but it sounds like you're, you're an athletic girl, like volleyball, archery, running. Um, if you're not doing bench presses or push-ups, you can still stay under the muscle if what you're wanting is to go a little bigger or smaller. Um, when you go over the muscle, things don't stay as centered as you're going to be used to. When you lay down, they're going to go more to the side, like natural breasts. Um, they're going to be more to the center. They're going to move around different. So it really just depends on you, Stephanie, on do you want that? Um, or do you want to stay under the muscle? That's a good conversation to have with your surgeon because they'll ask you those questions. And usually changing placement of implants comes with its own set of risks, comes with its own, like, it's not as simple as just placing it right on top. Like you have to create a whole new pocket, put the implant in there. Usually you change implants. You might go to a textured implant. So if you go over the muscle. So it's a more lengthy conversation than like yes or no. So you could do under and you could do over depending on your anatomy. It just depends on your lifestyle. Like you said, you, you work out a lot. Does it bother you that you have implants? Like, do you, like can you feel them jumping up into the side? Does that bother you? that animation, what's it called, deformity? I hate that it's called that because most of us can do that. So I'm like, it's not a deformity. But anyway, some people don't like that. So going to over the muscle decreases the risk of seeing that as much. But you may have seen yesterday, a lady in bus mob posted a photo. She swatched, she went from under to over the muscle and she can still kind of like tense them a little bit, even over the muscle. So. Just a very broad conversation for you, Stephanie. Um, you can keep under the muscles. It doesn't look like you're working out your chest muscles too hard to really cause any visual problems or any kind of like complications. Four consults. I've had four consults. And I think I've settled on one. <laughs> That's what, and I will say, the more consults you have, while I think it's great that women are going with like the first surgeon and they have questions and they aren't sure, but they still do it. Like nobody should do that. Um, like if you feel good about your first surgeon, go with that surgeon. But I will say the more consults you have outside of like two or three, things are gonna get more confusing because different surgeons are gonna recommend different things. Some are gonna say lift, some are gonna say no lift, some are gonna say under, over. And then by the time you're done with multiple consults, you're like, oh, I have no idea what I want now because all these surgeons are saying different things. So try not to have too many consultations. 
and then stress yourself out because now you don't know what to choose. Um, yeah. So if you trust one of your surgeons, you like the way their vision is for like your anatomy and your goals, then I would run with that one. <laughs> Sarah, I'm excited, but waiting for a callback from Dr. Paul. Deciding to go bigger, more augmented look, email pictures. Just want to be able to make sure my goal is attainable for surgery. Absolutely, Sarah. That's very, we all want to feel confident before heading into surgery, right? Um, that kind of leads me into another question, which will kind of touch on what you just said, Sarah. Um, yeah, they all say different things. I know. See, just, different surgeons have different techniques to do different things, and they could probably end up coming up with the same outcomes with just two different paths to get there. That's why I'm like, be careful getting too much information because it'll sound contradictory sometimes to just get to the same place, depending on how they were trained, what their what their steps are, all of that stuff to get you to where you want to go. Um, okay, so the question was, how to do with goal photos? Oh, how many goal photos should I send my surgeon? So I love this question because a lot of women may not realize if you show a surgeon three to five photos, you might like something about each photo, right? But it's not all cohesive into one picture. So I like when people bring multiple photos to their consult of what they like and a couple of what they don't want. This kind of gives the surgeon like an idea of, okay, I won't head in this direction because you don't like a very natural look. Oh, you like a more augmented look based on these three to five photos. Okay, let's talk about those. And then you can go more in depth from there. But for you, Stephanie, I would do the same thing. Go to Goal Finder. Um, if you don't know, I'll put it here. Uh, Goal Finder is where you can search other women's results by stats. So you can put in your height, your weight, and get an idea of like, okay, so this person has kind of a similar frame to me. They have 300 cc's. Okay, let me see 500. Okay, they have five. Let me see. What would I like best on somebody's frame like mine? Do I like hers better? Do I like hers better? And kind of compiling those into a collection inside a goal finder, you could make like your own favorites and have it emailed to you so you can show your surgeon your specific folder of after photos that you like and it's similar to your body type. So that kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of, well, I like her look, but is her chest four inches wider than mine? But Goal Finder will totally eliminate that for you. So check that out. My husband and I met Dr. Paul. Both felt great. Oh, that's awesome, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, when you know, you know. Um, it's funny. I've I've never done more. I don't think. No. My first breast dog, I only saw, only did one consultation. With my second breast dog, I did two or three. And then I went to Dr. Pyle at Davis and Pyle Plastic Surgery at the time, which is now Amelia Aesthetics. Um, and my third, I just went back to Dr. Pyle because he's my surgeon now, right? <laughs> um, so it's nice to find a surgeon that you can trust and that you feel comfortable going to if like a year down the road or two years on the road, you're like, I don't think something's right. Like don't pick a surgeon that you're not gonna feel comfortable reaching back out to because that relationship is really important. <laughs> um, especially when you're healing those first six weeks. Like we all know in bus mobs, so many things change, right? Like are so much, like if they're up here, you're like, this don't look right. I want you to feel comfortable going to your surgeon and being like, hey, one doesn't feel right or something feels off or, hey, I have a rash. What should I do about it? You know, a lot of times women are allergic to antibiotics and don't know. Like me, I didn't even know until after my first breast dog, I got put on Keflex. I was allergic to it. And I needed to reach back out, right? So I was like, hey, something's not right. And they're like, oh, you have an allergy. And I'm like, cool. So it's, you know, being able to reach out to your team that you paid for is really important. So don't pick, don't pick a surgeon that you don't feel confident in them having your back down the road. Um, what site was that? Um, Paula, I was talking about Goal Finder. And I was talking about... Dr. Paul, but I think you're talking about Goal Finder. So I'll put, I'll reply to you right here. Goal Finder. <laughs> Hold on now. All right, now I can see. Goal Finder. <laughs> I feel so old sometimes, but then I'm like, I'm not old. And then I'm like, stop lying to yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we're back.
All right, Paula, I hope that you got that link because I there it is. Okay, it just showed up. Um, prescribed Keflex, Chloe. Yeah, it was horrible. Threw up and got a rash. Yes, I threw up within the first 24 hours. The next day I was covered in spots and I was like, this doesn't look right. And it wasn't even bothering me. It was just a visual thing. I was like, oh. And so I got switched from like Keflex to, well, I don't know. It's been so long. It was 2012. So 10 years ago, I got switched to something and it didn't make me itchy <laughs> or it didn't like have spots all over me. You're welcome, Paula. Have you heard of Ovitex? Oh, Mesh. I haven't heard of that specific brand, to be honest, but there are multiple meshes on the market. Like you just said, Gal Galaflex is one. Um, no, no, I actually, no, I take that back. Stephanie, I have heard of that type of mesh only yesterday inside a bus mob, and it may have been you. I don't know. Um, someone was talking about it. So I would, if I were you, I would go into bus mob's main page and click the little like spyglass and search however you spell that mesh. Um, and see what other women have said. Um, I know currently on Amelia Aesthetics, well, I don't know if it's currently, but I know we were using the Galaflex, so I'm not certain about the other one, what the difference is, but I know all mesh kind of do the same thing. Like the, the purpose is to kind of just hold the implant in place if you have issues with bottoming out or the implant's a little too low, you need a little extra support. Really correcting issues is what mesh has been intended to do not to be a preventative it's just meant to prevent or to correct it's for correcting not preventing so I, that's something we talked about last week too because i was getting a lot of mesh questions and i've been seeing it a lot in bus mob like should i request mesh with like my first breast dog and it comes with its own set of risks like if you don't need mesh you're increasing your risk of complications of infection of problems happening if you don't need it to correct a problem so keep that in mind it's more expensive it's honestly not super necessary in the medical field just yet unless it's used to to correct a problem like i use this example one time kind of like when you have a hernia like an umbilical hernia you need mesh right to to strengthen your abdominal wall and get that hernia back where it needed to go um, but you wouldn't go to the doctor without a hernia and be like, Hey, just in case I get a hernia, could you put mesh right there on my stomach? You probably wouldn't do that because we don't know that we're ever going to have a hernia. You don't know that you're going to have a complication that's going to require mesh to begin with. So I wouldn't do it for a first time, honestly, but that's just me. And if you feel more comfortable with it, then you can have that conversation, but it is more expensive. And I want everybody to know that. <laughs> Uh, okay, Chloe, I'm 19 days post-op from a lift and implant exchange, sailing to silicone. I did that two years ago. Um, I seem to be healing well, but I'm starting to spit stitches in my T area. If you don't know what that is, your T area, I need a boob. I used to have a boob, like a little stress ball boob in my fruit thing, but I don't have one anymore. Okay, let's just pretend this is my boob. I mean, it is an implant. So a T-zone is, so like your areola is right here, and you have, you're going to have an incision going down the middle right here. Your T-zone is where the top of that vertical line is and where your areola meet. So there's like a little T-junction, basically. And a lot of times, because there's so much tension on that one little spot, it can open a little bit, like a teeny tiny bit, or you can start spitting stitches say that five times fast spitting start spitting stitches um so what you would do let your surgeon know because depending on how big that area is that's opening up you might need like a steroid i needed steroid to put on it to dry it up because i had one of those little spots kind of open up at my t-zone but it can be it can be freaky because you're like this don't look right but it's best just to keep that area dry like just pat dry it with some nonstick gauze that's what i did I use nonstick gauze. I put it in between my bra just to kind of keep things like the airflow there. Um, I was personally prescribed because I reached out to my surgeon and I was prescribed a topical steroid to dry it up. And then eventually it just closed on its own. Um, and it's not even there anymore. But I know when you see something like that, you're like, I'm going to see this for the rest of my life. 
but you don't like I had I had a pretty decent I mean it was when it's you it's all like all you can see right but it it's not even there anymore it completely closed up it's the it's I have no vertical I can't even see any of my vertical scars anymore and it's been two years so on that topic I know a lot of people ask about scarring just so you know the first 12 months your scar is healing so try not to be too critical of that of your decisions whether it's a lift reduction implants just you know any incision it takes 12 months for it to heal and even beyond that you'll see some changes so keep that in mind um what you see at the three month mark on like before and after photos on surgeons websites even on goal finder um that's why it's so important to see like how far post-op they are which is really cool about goal finder because it'll say like how far it is but yeah those three month photos they're going to be red and that's not your final result they will fade eventually to be like silver or if they're raised maybe a little pink if they're not raised more like skin tone it's just wild how scars can really just blend back in with your skin tone uh okay is it normal to fill the implant on your ribs four week post-op i personally never did feel them on my ribs but i also started out with a decent amount of breast tissue to cover the implant um so i and i was genetically inclined to have 36 triple d's as a teenager so i kind of already had an idea of what the pressure would be like on my chest so maybe that's why i didn't have that sensation personally but other women might feel that feeling of something laying on their ribs if they've never really had that weight or density on that area before so i'd be curious to hear other women's perspective on that like could you feel your implants laying on your ribs pretty soon post-op that's an interesting question cynthia um i've been watching it like a hawk but i can see the area good yeah i can feel the stitches poking out in that spot um i will say some surgeons will say like to leave that stitch alone some will say you can trim it like just get some scissors and trim it down to like to your skin basically or some surgeons will say get a tweezer and pull it out it really just depends on if it's a more superficial suture or an internal suture that's important that you don't want to pull out so just let let your surgeon know that that's happening and what they would prefer you do with that stitch okay okay oh i have been talking a lot mine said i can clip it but i can't see it to clip it safely yeah then i would just leave it alone because eventually like if it's irritated and there's that little circle spot and everything you'll have, it'll eventually probably start to work its way out and then you'll be able to clip it but i also had a stitch like poking out of that little t-zone and i and i've had three breast dogs and a reduction and i've never had that before so I, I was like, uh, there's something coming out of my body, but it, it's so, it's so much more normal than I think we realize, but being in bus mob, we do know that that's a thing. Um, but yeah, Stephanie, what extra recovery precautions are needed for a lift versus a breast dog? I have a wild two year old and a kindergartner to plan for. All right. Well, it always, it's always nice to have help with children. Am I right? Luckily, a kindergartner can pro probably help a little bit with the two-year-old. Um, but precautions. You're just going to have a lot more stitches, right? You're going to have stitches around your areola, down the midline. Assuming it's a lollipop, if it's an anchor, you're also going to have them underneath your breast as well. So watch out for little feet. That's all I can think of when I'm like, I remember changing my daughter. She was 15 months old when I had my second breast augmentation because I had a lift and went bigger because I breastfed her. And I remember changing her diaper being like, I really hope you don't decide to start kicking your legs and you kick me in the boobs because I remember reading that in Bus Mob, like even ten, like, what was it? In 2014, um, for so over two years before I had my second augmentation, um, I started Bus Mob as a stay at home mom. And I just kept reading like, my kid did this, my kid did this, my kid. And I'm like, oh my God. But yeah, watch out for those little feet. Uh, I think your two-year-old, well, two-year-olds, I remember changing Hazel. I can't remember, but some two-year-olds, you still got to change your diaper. So, like, watch out for them crazy feet. Am I right? Um, you're going to want to sleep pro propped up a little bit. 
you probably don't have to go as, as aggressive as a 45 degree sponge. Uh, like I usually recommend for breast dogs, but you're, you are going to want to sleep propped up because that's going to help you with sitting up to go to the bathroom and stuff. Um, where's the, where the stick meets the lollipop? Yeah! I'm stealing that. I'm hurting them. That's a good one. That's where the junction is, where the stick meets the lollipop. Um, but as far, I've never just recovered from a lift. I have a reduction, which was way more invasive than a lift. And I've had a lift with an augmentation, like an implant exchange. Um, so that's a good question to ask the group. Like, hey, anyone who's just had a lift, what would you recommend? Because that would be a lot, probably helpful for a lot of women too. Like, bus mom's not just for breast implants. It can be for lifts, tummy tucks, liposuction. It is called bus mob because originally back in the day it started out as primarily a breast group, but it's grown to be so much more than that. So don't feel like you can only ask breast questions, <laughs> best breast questions. Um, you can ask whatever you want. I sleep, uh, I sleep at an angle. That's good. All right. Uh, my little like emoji things are going crazy. It would be both anchor and exchange. Okay, so that's that's what I had. I had the I had a full anchor and an implant exchange. I didn't really feel much from the implant exchange. A little bit reduction of range of motion. My daughter was 15 months old during that scenario. I had my mom come in for the first week just to help out, but by the second week, I was able to safely, with my surgeon's permission, pick up my daughter as need be. So. One thing I would recommend you do is check out my old Instagram. I pinned to the top how to safely pick up your kids while you're recovering from a breast surgery. Um, and I was, she was actually 15 months old and I was actually recovering. That's, that's how it kind of prompted it. But Jenny.Eden, um, that's my old Instagram account. I'm not on it anymore. I've pivoted to just like a more personal family account. Um, but if you go to Jenny.Eden's Instagram, I pinned to the top of the feed me picking up my daughter safely while recovering from a breast dog and lift. So if you want to check that out, go check that out. Um, so basically, you just kneel down to them, have them come to you. Like, you're not doing any of this motion. No, you keep elbows in. Bring the child to you. Like, hold. you're still kneeling. Bring them to you. And then you stand up. So you're using all of your legs, your back. You're not using your arms barely at all. So have the two-year-old do as much work as possible or your kid have them, you know, squeeze their legs around you. I used to tell my daughter that. I'm like, squeeze. And she'd squeeze her legs up. But yeah, you're going to want to have T-Rex arms for as long as possible. No, I'm just kidding. Um, usually, hey, Christy. Usually um, you, you'll have exercises too where you raise your arms now. So it really helps to not have, the, not have this deal going on. Okay, I have gone over three minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, I do these every Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern. So if you're just not popping on, I'll be back next Wednesday, but I'm always inside the group. So if you guys have any questions, you need me for anything, shoot me a direct message, tag me, follow me on Instagram. Um, well, follow me on bus mom, just go to bus Mom's Instagram and I will be as receptive. Uh, Kimber hold on a second. Kimberly just said something. Now I'm distracted. I had an anchor lift and implants four weeks ago, and somehow I was washing my own hair by day two. Girl, you are a rock star. All right. I got to head out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you all next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern. If you have any questions for me, you can drop them in the comments or just shoot me a direct message. Thank you, ladies, for being so awesome and for making Bus Mob a great place.